Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Amanda. So I'm really excited to be bringing you four delicious one pot or skillet meals, however you'd like to call them. But these are going to be easy, great, perfect for a weeknight meal and they're delicious as well. So I hope you'll join me for this video. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you're excited to see these delicious meals and we'll go ahead and get into the first one. So first up we have chicken burrito skillet. Now I don't know about y'all, but one pot meals are awesome for us because it uses less dishes. And anytime I can save on dishes, I absolutely love it. So I've just added some oil to the skillet and we're just gonna saute that rice for just a little bit. And once we've got that toasted up, we're just gonna add some chicken broth as well. And now for this meal, the recipe actually talks about using boneless, skinless chicken breasts and, you know, sauteing those and things like that. I actually had cooked chicken breasts and wanted to use that for this. So never feel like that just because a recipe calls for raw chicken that you can't modify it if you have cooked chicken on hand because this is a great way to use leftover chicken. So in here, I'm also adding some corn and some diced tomatoes. I'm also going to add a can of black beans that I've rinsed and drained as well as some green chilies. The original recipe didn't call for green chilies but I thought it would add some good flavor here so always again always feel free to modify a recipe to add something if you think it'll sound good. I've also got some spices going in here that we're going to mix in here well. I will make sure to link this recipe in the description box below and I'll also try to remember to put like any notes for any of these recipes of what I changed about it or something like that so you can know what I did differently and what we enjoyed. And again, always feel free to make those decisions yourself too and leave things out, add things in, stuff like that. So I'm just adding my cooked chicken in here now and I'm also just going to cover this and then let it cook for a little while. You definitely want to make sure it's kind of on a medium low that way that it doesn't get, you know, scorched on the bottom. And you're, you're just going to make sure all the rice has absorbed all the liquid. And if you need to, you let it go another minute or two to kind of get all that liquid absorbed in there. And then you're going to top it with some shredded cheese. I used, I believe it was like mild or sharp cheddar. And you can use whatever kind you like. Colby Jack would probably be really good. Uh, Monterey Jack, some people might like. Things like that. So just whatever your favorite cheese is to use, especially for Mexican food. But here it is, completely done. And y'all, this was so good. I cannot recommend this recipe enough. We have made it two or three times already. And we love it. Like, that's how much... Because we actually made it again the next day. Because we didn't have a whole lot left over. So, uh, and I've just got some things I'm serving it with. Some red onions, tomatoes, avocado, black olives. Any of your, like, taco fixings would be excellent. So, highly recommend that one. And next up, we have loaded baked potato soup. This was another huge hit. If you watched my last What's for Dinner, I actually made like some boiled potatoes. And I used those as it was a side dish. I used those in this, this meal. I thought it would be a great way to kind of do something different with those potatoes. And, you know, kind of change it up a little. So I've just diced an onion. And in this pot, I've got some butter in here. And I'm adding some minced garlic. And I want to saute that for just a little bit. Now, the recipe actually talked about using bacon and sauteing that and things like that. I didn't do that because we were just going to top it with some bacon. And I've also added some flour in here. We're just going to cook that for a minute. And then use a mixture of milk and half and half. So we're just working on building our base for the soup. Now, as a side note for the onions, I actually, my husband, once he saw the recipe, he was kind of like, wait a minute, I will try this if you don't put the onions in it because he doesn't eat onions. So what I actually did was saute the onions on the side and add them into our soup, the people who wanted it, which was really just me and my daughter. So that was really tasty too. So I'll get to that in a little bit, but I added some chicken broth in there. We're just going to cook that a little bit and let it thicken up and then add our seasonings and get those all whisked in really well. And then next will come our shredded cheese and you use a mixture of mild and sharp cheddar. We're just going to get that all whisked together and mixed in there really well. And then we're going to start adding some sour cream in there. And that's just going to help even more with that creaminess. And just a side note that if you do use leftover potatoes like I did, make sure you kind of heat those because it really calls for you to, to pretty much turn it off after all this gets done. So you do want to make sure you heat those up. I heated them in, in the microwave. We didn't get them quite as warm as I should have. So just make sure that when you reheat those potatoes to put in here that you have them good and good and hot and ready to go in there. And then that way, because it doesn't really cook much more after this. So this is really how easy it is. It comes together really fast. And we absolutely love this soup. It was so good. I don't know if y'all like 
the soup from O'Charlie's, but like I love their loaded potato soup or whatever it's called. And this kind of reminded me of something like that. So we were really excited to try it. I've just got some bacon, some extra cheese and some chives on top there. And the only thing I was missing was O'Charlie's rolls. That would have been perfect. <laughs> but I definitely recommend that recipe. So next up, we have a sour cream chicken enchilada skillet. And I've got 12 corn tortillas here that I'm just going to cut up into bite-sized pieces. And then sit those to the side to get started building the rest of our skillet. And these are basically kind of like a deconstructed enchilada. So it's all done in a skillet. You don't have to roll them up and mess with all that. It's really easy and very flavorful too. So I've got those all cut up and next we're going to get started building our, our kind of sauce. I've got some butter going in there and then I'm going to get that melted and add in some flour. And then we're going to add in some chicken broth and that's going to start building our base for that. Now, as far as seasonings, you can really do whatever you feel comfortable doing. You know, some people really love spicy, some people don't. Uh, I use like garlic powder, cumin, onion powder, Mexican oregano, chili powder, things like that. If you know, you can use as much or as little of those as you want. I'll have the recipe linked below or I'll probably have it topped out below actually. And again, I'll kind of have guesstimates on how much I use, but it really is a lot of a personal preference kind of taste thing. And then I've got a can of the green chilies and I always buy the mild. So just make sure you always get mild if you kind of try to keep the heat at a, at a minimum because that's what I do. And then I added about a half, between a half and three fourths a cup of salsa verde, a small can of drained black olives. And then we're going to also add our chicken. So now again, this, this is something where I wanted to utilize cooked chicken and this was a great way to do it. So I had some chicken in my freezer I wanted to use up and all I had to do was add this to it. And it kind of reheats it as it's cooking. So it was perfect for, perfect way to use chicken. And I feel like chicken that's frozen really does well when you heat it in things that have some sort of sauce or something like that. Because I feel like it just, to me, tastes better once it's been frozen. But, and then I've got about a cup of sour cream going in here. And we're going to whisk that together. And once that all gets in here, we're going to go ahead and add in our tortillas. And then top it with some shredded cheese again you know whatever kind you like i use colby jack and just a little bit of sharp cheddar because i needed to use up a package i had opened and we're gonna then cover that and let it cook for just a few more minutes until that cheese is all good and melted now if you didn't mind going ahead and turning up another pot you can make some mexican rice to go with this I also think a good addition in this actually would be to add some drained canned corn, maybe some drained, you know, and rinsed black beans. Those would all make excellent additions. So I definitely recommend any, you know, any of those additions. I think a lot of times once you try something like this, you can start thinking of things you could do differently or, you know, ways to change it up, or at least I do that a lot. So there it is. It really was so good. So creamy. Like I just loved how, and it was just a little different than just your typical kind of red enchilada sauce. And then I just served it with kind of like a little side salad with some avocado and tomatoes. And we really enjoyed this. And like I said, it's a great way to use up leftover chicken. You could also feel free to use rotisserie chicken in this. You know, cook some fresh chicken for it, however you like to do. But I'm trying to work through some things in my freezer. So we really enjoyed this meal. Highly recommend it as well. So next we have turkey sausage, farro, and kale skillet. And this recipe actually comes from the well-plated cookbook. I'll have that cookbook linked below, but I found it online, the recipe as well. So I'll go ahead and have the recipe linked as well. And I'm just cutting up and dicing up a, a red onion. Now I did make a little change to this recipe. It, it called for the turkey sausage, of course. And my daughter doesn't really like sausage, so I try not to use it a whole lot. And so we actually just used ground chicken for this recipe instead that we had on hand. And that worked just fine. I do think that it it meant that we didn't have as much spice. So like, you know, a sausage is really seasoned. And I tried to add in some of the seasons I found to kind of duplicate a sausage flavor, but I don't think it quite did the trick. So me personally, I would prefer to have the sausage in it. But, you know, this turkey would definitely work, you know, or, um, sorry, ground turkey or ground chicken. Either one of those would work. You just might want to really up some spices and kind of see. So now that I've got that 
ground chicken added in there and like I said, that was already cooked in my freezer and y'all that is such a time saver to have things like that thrown in your freezer to put in recipes like this and then I just added the spices into the recipe I also added some garlic I went a little heavy on the garlic we really do like garlic and so it, we always enjoy it when that's in recipes a lot of it and then I'm going to go ahead and add in the kale and I just bought a big bag of the kale from the store like it's already washed and made it super simple to go in here there's like a it's like a huge bag I got at Kroger and it really wasn't too expensive or anything so and I actually had never cooked with kale I've had kale before in that there's like a superfood salad that Chick-fil-a used to have that had kale in it and it was so good but um, I had never actually cooked with it before and I, I enjoyed it. Now I've just got some cannellini beans going in here as well as some diced, canned diced tomatoes and some farro. Have y'all ever had farro before? Let me know down in the comments. I really like the texture of it a lot. So I really want to try to learn some different things to make with it because I do like it a lot. Also added in a little chicken broth and I got a little worried that wasn't going to be enough, but it was. I just had to keep an eye on it and make sure I didn't need to add any. And I'm also adding a little bit more seasoning in there, some salt and some Italian seasoning. And I'm just trying to make sure everything's kind of like all the farrows kind of submerged. And you're just going to cook this for about 25 to 30 minutes. And you don't cover it or anything. And like I said, just keep an eye on that liquid level. If you feel like you might need to add a little more, you definitely can do that. Once it gets done... You're going to want to add in some Parmesan cheese. And I also topped mine with a little Parmesan cheese. This is such a like nutritious meal. So, and it's hearty with the beans and kale and everything. So I would definitely like to try it with the sausage to another time. So thank y'all so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can join my YouTube family and not miss out on any more delicious recipes. And I hope you're having a blessed day wherever you are. I'll see you in the next one.